Oh my goodness. Uh, I don't think I'm ever going to need to run this farm again. Jeez. Today, I am going to be building probably the most ridiculous flower farm that you've ever seen. And it's not even that difficult to build. It just requires quite a lot of resources. Unfortunately, I just happen to have a bunch of chaps over here now that give me quite a lot of resources. You see, in a couple of live streams, we managed to wrangle a handful of villagers. And we put them in here. And we put these guys in here with the zombie in here to cure them and, well, turn them into zombies and cure them again in order to lower everyone's trades. And we've got a bunch of reasonable trades in here, but it's not the trades I'm actually after. It's the glass. See, I've got all of these librarians to get lots and lots of glass, and I have all of these clerics to get lots and lots of bottles of XP. And redstone as well, of course. And the way it works is relatively simple. I flick the lever. That zombie then beats up those villagers there, and then I cure them which lowers their trades and all of the trades of the villagers around them, meaning that I can buy things very cheaply. For instance, this chap here sells bookshelves for just one emerald, which I can break down into books and then sell those books back to him at one book per emerald, which means I can make money. And I can make it en masse because there's an absolutely ridiculous number of villagers in here and it all works out rather well. So now that all of those villagers are nicely turned, I come to my little chest and I get myself a splash potion of weakness. I grab myself four golden apples and I throw the splash potion of weakness into the middle here. And then I just click on these guys. Like so. And in a minute, they'll all be healthy again. And my trades will be cheap. And there we go. After not too long at all, these guys in the middle have all turned back to villagers and have got rather confused over which workstation is there. So I'm not going to play with those guys. I'm going to play with these ones. And I'm going to sell them some paper for very cheap. And I'm going to buy a whole bunch of bookcases for very cheap. And then I'm going to sell him all of his books for very cheap. You see, this is an absolutely fantastic way of generating vast amounts of emeralds rather quickly. I mean, probably not quite as quick as a raid farm or something like that, because you do have to wait for the villagers to restock their trades eventually, but it is still a pretty cheap and reasonable system. And when I've got all of the bookcases money can buy, I would normally go and stand outside and make a big pile of bookcases and break them all down, but the weather's not looking ever so nice. So I'm going to hop over here, have a little sleep in my outside bed, and then build a rather gargantuan tower of bookshelves. And then, of course, I'm going to smash them all down again. And then once I've done that, I can go back in here and these villagers should hopefully be ready to buy them all back off me again. Which they are. And then once I've got myself a ridiculous number of emeralds, I can then spend them on things like redstone and bottles of XP. Yes. And there we go. My emeralds are just about spent and I have a whole bunch of redstone and bottles of XP. Um, what do I need all of these bottles of XP for, you might be asking? Well, at some point in the not too distant future, I'm going to combine them with all of the bottles of XP that I've been getting from these guys. And I'm going to make myself a fancy little XP shower system so that I can have XP on demand whenever I need it to fix my tools and whatnot. But right now I don't need XP or tools, I need equipment, which means I need lots of iron a reasonable amount of cobblestone, and quite a lot of wood, which is something I never have very much of, which isn't ideal. How much wood have I got? A bit. Oh, that's not very much at all. Why do we always need wood? But well, let's not worry about wood right now. Let's hop over to the area we're going to be building today, which is over by my mob skyscraper in this village here. And we're going to be building a new skyscraper, although not immediately because I want to build the farm first. And I'm going to choose to build it somewhere in the vicinity of this village, probably round about here, because this looks like a good spot to pop a skyscraper on. Let's do this by first smashing it all to pieces because I hate villagers and I don't want them to have nice things. Yes, look at me smashing all of the glorious wood. They'll be in tears. Saddest villagers in town. They're in a village, not a town. Ah, oh, shut up. So my plan today, as I'm sure you've seen from the title and the thumbnail, is to build a flower farm and a ridiculous flower farm at that, which means I need a reasonable number of resources, but not all that many. The main one being grass, which is ideal because there's a lot of that around here. And I'm going to build it in this space here. However, I do need to see if this is chunk aligned. Not that it really matters for this particular farm, but I'm going to be having hopper minecarts and I don't really want them disappearing over chunk borders because then they'll disappear. And disappearing minecarts are not much fun. 
unless you're into that sort of thing, in which case, you know, great, good for you. But I'm not, all right? Oh, look at that. That's perfect. It's a chunk, mate. So this chunk is going to be the base of our next skyscraper, and the skyscraper, well, doesn't actually need to be all that tall because this flower farm is relatively short. However, this is going to be a die-creating skyscraper, so it'll have all sorts of farms in there, including cactus farms and sea pickle farms and all that sort of good stuff. So it's going to need to be a reasonable size in the end, but not today. Today, all I'm interested in doing is putting down a foundation so we know roughly where we're going to be building and building my flower farm. Which is going to be incredible. And there it is. Behold in all its glory. The best flower farm you've ever seen in the world. Easy peasy. It works perfectly. Jobs are good. And oh, I can go home early today. Or I guess I could build an actually good one. Because it's pretty rubbish. That Let's be honest. Yeah. And in order to build it, we're going to start with some theory. So I have a flower in the middle of this green grass. And a dying golem. Clear off, you're in the way of me experiment. Shoot, go away. And I have a stack of bone meal. And if I bone meal the flower, it will spread. And I only got one flower that time. I spread it again. I only got one. I spread it again. I got two that time. Spread it again. I got a couple more. And you can see as I keep bone mealing that particular flower, eventually I will get a full area's worth of blue flowers. And a nine golem. And a pig. Eventually, if you carry on bone mealing that flower, you will end up with a 7x7 seven seven area of flowers. And yeah, that's basically as far as one flower will spread. And it's relatively slow and it uses a reasonable amount of bone meal to do that. However, if I then put the flower one block down into the floor like that and then bone meal it, all of a sudden we get a whole bunch more flowers per piece of bone meal. Instead of one or two, as I'll demonstrate again with this one here, we get one or two this time we get a whole bunch more and it really doesn't take all that much bone mill to actually fill out the entire area and as i'm sure you've seen a million times by a million youtubers you can basically create either water flush farms or piston farms in order to generate lots and lots of flowers break them and collect them and that's exactly what i'm going to be doing but I'm going to be doing it very, 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 very quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the rough center of this thing and pop a couple of chests down near the edge. And I'm going to put these chests here like this. Just like that. Nice and easy. And then I'm going to put in an absolutely ridiculous number of hoppers going into these chests. And out of these, I'm going to have hoppers going in each direction by three. Like this. And like that. And then like that. Then like that. And then like that and they're going to go to bed so you can see here i have a ridiculous number of hoppers going into a couple of chests which might seem a bit overkill but as i said this machine is going to be very fast out of these three hoppers here i'm going to come back a few blocks like this with some more hoppers and then i'm going to run out of hoppers and have to make some more and then look in my wood box and cry because i don't have much oh my goodness i've only got anything left jeez Fortunately, though, I am very, very nearly done with the hoppers. Now I've got all of my hoppers in place, I need to put minecart track on top of them, and I'm going to do that in a rather interesting way, because minecart track always ends up facing in the direction you don't want to face it. So I'm going to come out from the front like this, and at the back, I'm going to do the same thing with a little end bit there. And these have got two blocks on the back of each one, and you'll see why in a minute. And then I'm going to get my minecart track, probably realise I haven't got enough, and I'm going to start at the middle on each lane like this. I'm going to go all the way to the back so that when I place these ones, they don't all join together. Yes, I had enough minecart track to do one. Great, I need more minecart track. It cost me all the materials, this is just a flower farm. Why is it so expensive, bro? Okay, now that all of my rail is in, I'm going to smash away these pieces that we had sticking out of the end, because we no longer need these ones. And I'm going to take these six levers I have here and I'm going to activate these six blocks here, like this. Now I could do this with redstone torches underneath those blocks, but levers are cheap because it's sticks and cobblestone made. On the top of these levers, I'm going to have some more solid blocks like this. And just in front of those, I'm going to have six pistons, like this. Amazing, it's all coming together so well. Oh, I've done this way too long. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I've done this too long, guys. Oh, jeez. All right, smash it. Undo all of that, and I'll do it again. Pretend I didn't do that. I've done too many hoppers. Jeez. Okay, so I'm going to now take out this back line of hoppers, because I've got too many. I'm going to move these blocks with the levers on to there instead. 
I'm going to put the levers on there, one, those ones instead, like that, you see. Here we go. And then these blocks are going to go above those levers like that, so I can get rid of these ones. Good. Don't join together wrong. Excellent, you didn't. That's good. And now I can put these pistons back along here like that. And now that's that side done. Now this side, we're going to get rid of these rails. Don't actually need these ones either. I'm going to put some solid blocks there like that. And in front of these ones, we're going to have another six pistons like that as well. So we've got pistons at each end. Are you following me? It's nice and easy so far, right? I'm going to put a block there. And I'm going to hop up onto this block. And I'm going to put redstone behind all of those things like that. And I'm going to try my best to hop up on the other side, although a couple of blocks might help me here. And put a bit of redstone along those ones as well. Now all of the pistons have redstone behind them. On this side, I'm going to take some more blocks. I'm going to come along the side like that and join those sides together. Then I'm going to make myself a little staircase so I can get up and down. And I'm going to run redstone pretty much all the way along here as well. And now I'm going to delete some of it because I'm going to replace it with observers. So I want an observer there like that. And I want two observers facing into that like that. And that's going to activate this redstone line when something goes past this observer like so. And it makes me fall off. There we go. And now I'm going to delete that bit of redstone dust there and put an ob another observer there, which is going to activate this redstone line, which when something goes in front of this, now you should see all of the pistons fire. Amazing. Now this is where it gets complicated. It doesn't really. I just said that for effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some grass like this. I'm going to bring it all over so, that, so it does that. And there you go. We now have a moving floor. How simple was that? Nice, easy, very, very easy moving floor. However, I don't want it to be moving right now, so I'm going to pop a lever there and I'm going to put that lever on and that'll stop that moving. I'm also, while I'm over here, I'm going to put another lever there and fire that one on to stop that one moving. Now, I need to figure out where the rough center of this thing is going to be and I'm going to say it's going to be here. I'm going to put a piece of grass there and a dispenser just there, like that. And into the back of that dispenser, I'm going to have three hoppers like that. And on the top of that last hopper there, I'm going to have a chest there like that, which is going to be our bone meal chest. Then on this side, I'm going to fill this side full of grass as well. And that's pretty much the entire thing done, apart from a tiny weeny bit more redstone and some barriers. And the barriers are basically just to stop the flowers falling out of the machine so the hopper mycarts can get them all. And we're going to make those out of glass so that we can see what's going on. So back up here, I'm going to have glass along the top of those pistons there. I'm going to have it too high so there's no spillages. One on top of that chest there and another load there. I'm going to come round this corner here and have a whole bunch of glass all the way down there like that. And again, this is going to be two layers thick. Then we're going to have glass going over those pistons there like that. And then what I'm going to do is going to have glass coming down this gap here like that. Glass coming along those blocks there like that, except for that one. Glass coming along there like that, and even over where we're going to be having our flower in the future, although I will have to remove that to put the flower in. And then I'm going to build the walls and continue those around there like that, all the way around back to that edge there. So we're completely boxed in now pretty much. Now these need to be two blocks high as well so that the flowers don't end up stuck on top of those. And then across here, I'm going to have a line of glass there. I'm going to put a glass block just there like that. And that means I can take that redstone signal, smash that one away there, and bring it up and across onto a solid block that's going to go on top of our dispenser. So there we go. So that's going to fire the dispenser. Now all I want is one more piece of glass just there to stop anything getting on top of that dispenser. And I believe that is this farm pretty much 100% done. So let's get rid of my temporary blocks that we don't need right now. Pop in six hopper minecarts, if we can reach. We need one flower, which we're going to just go with blue for now. And we need a bunch of bone meal. So we put the bone meal in this top chest here, which should start filtering down nicely into our dispenser, which we can't really get to. We can get to. There we go. That's coming into there nicely. And we need to put our flower on top of that glass block. So we're going to break that glass block there, which we don't actually need. We're going to put that flower on there. In fact, we don't actually need that one or that one or that one either. We might as well save ourselves some money on some glass. And now, I think that's it. I, I can't think there's anything I've forgotten. So, providing this actually works on servers and not just on single player like I've done in tests, let's see what happens. Let's turn that lever off. 
which has retracted all of those pistons. And we're going to flick this lever on and then off very quickly. And that should activate the grass and the dispenser. And there we go. You can now see that the flowers grow and then get demolished very, very, very quickly. Whilst generating many, many lags but creating as many, many flowers. And the reason why we needed all of those hopper minecarts is because this thing does create flowers so quickly that without them, well, in my test, it just couldn't keep up. Now, the other thing I had on my test world that I haven't got on here is under these blocks here, I actually had more hoppers going into this chest here, so they were coming in even faster. But we'll have to keep our eyes on how these hoppers go and see if they start backing up as to see whether we need to do that on here or not. Oh, we, oh, oh, geez. We got them full. We do need them in the middle. Yeah, we need them in the middle. There we go. Put the glass in. Not saving money on glass. So far, things seem to be keeping up pretty well. There's no backing up in any of these hoppers. Ah, there is in that one there. Okay, so we are getting a bit of a backup. Which means I need to do hopper jigamerating. Are you doing what? You know what I mean. We've got no idea. Ah, well, that could be you, mate, doesn't it? So, three more hoppers there. <laughs> three more hoppers there. And now we need to... Oh, I see what I've done different. Oh, man, I'm going to have to break all of my redstone again now. My minecart tracks are going to all break. Oh, my goodness. There was a big backup there as well. Oh, jeez, I'm glad I'm doing this. But look how many flowers we've got. We were hardly even running that thing. Stop joining together. So annoying. Okay, I have rejigged the hoppers to try and optimize their path into this thing. And I think this should hopefully work now a bit better. I mean, it was working, but it was backing up, which is not what we wanted. So what I basically try to do if we dig down under here is for each line, have it going in a slightly different way. So this first line comes all the way along and then dog legs into the side of the chest there. The second line goes one further than that and then dog legs and goes into this one and then into that one. And the third line comes all the way down here, goes into this hopper and straight into the bottom chest. And obviously then we've got the hoppers underneath those lines that are actually taking out anything that's overflowing from those and putting those into the bottom chest as well. And I've done exactly the same thing on the other side. So fingers crossed, if we start this thing up again, just like that. No, not just like that. I've got to turn that one off. Then, just like that, it should be ridiculously powerful now. Not doing anything. Why is it? Oh, I broke a bit of redstone. Oops. Yes. Oh, I broke a couple of bits of redstone. There we go. Now it's being ridiculously powerful again. Let's say hello to Diz Tom. And it all seems to be working nicely. All of the hopper minecarts are going backwards and forwards. All of the flowers appear to be picking picked up. And if we look in this chest... It is coming through at an incredible rate, which is exactly what I like to see. Yes, many flowers. We're not getting any going into there because they're coming straight through into there, which means our extra hoppers are working perfectly. Let's look for backups. There don't appear to be any. However, this hopper will actually be powering on and off as this redstone gets powered and unpowered. But that's not the end of the world. Have a bit of a dig underneath, see if any of these hoppers are uh, causing problems. What about that one there? Oh, that one's backing up quite significantly. Hmm. Which means that one now is... Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. And those ones all... Oh, man. There's just... Hmm. Oh, jeez. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Just too much coming from either side. Oh, man. But now look at the speed that they're going into that bottom chest. This is incredible. So it really is just this hopper that is backing up slightly, but otherwise everything else is going through perfectly. We almost, in fact, we've got over a double chest of these blue flowers already, which is more than I need. So stop the machine. Let all the flowers get picked up and carried away. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I have the most ridiculous flower farm that you've maybe ever seen. I mean, I'm not going to say it's definitely because I don't know what other people have made, but I think that's pretty snazzy. The only problem is now I'm going to need a ridiculous... Oh, my goodness. Really? No. What did... You knew I was coming, didn't you? You went invisible. You see me. Oh, and you've got a trident. I don't think I want you to be alive. Thank you. With your trident just kicking about over there. Good. Right, yes. As I was about to say before I was rudely interrupted by the wandering trader, the only problem is now that I'm going to need a ridiculous number of chests to store all of the different colours of flowers because I've run out of ender chests. 
So realistically, if I'd have built this much, much, much higher up, I could have had some sort of giant storage system underneath it that was fully automated. But of course, I don't really think things through like that. Oh, jeez. Okay, I'm going to make some last minute modifications to this hopper system. And then I'm going to see how much bone meal it costs us to generate a whole double chest worth of flowers and how quickly it happens. There we go. I've squeezed in another single chest in there to try and alleviate that back hopper and just give that an extra bit of stuff underneath it to, uh, to pull those flowers out. Let's see how much bone meal we've got in there. We have a full dispenser full. <laughs> we've got flowers. In. Oh, jeez. How did I get flowers in there? Okay. I am going to run one full dispenser's worth of bone meal. I've taken everything out from behind that. So there's no more than one full dispenser's worth. And I want to see how many flowers we get from one dispenser full. So the entire system is completely empty. This is how much we got from the last lot. I'm going to flip this lever off. Prepare my stopwatch and get ready to turn it on. In three, two... One, go. Right, the new chest. Are you filling with many, many flowers? You are. This is good news. You're filling with... Re oh, my goodness. Look how quick it's going. Let's go up here and keep our eye on the system. Try not to pick up any of the flowers as it's going. Look at it go. It's incredible. And there we go. That is all of the bone meal gone. It took... Six minutes and 48 seconds to get through that entire dispenser. However... This many cornflowers, which is nearly five stacks of cornflowers, somehow ended up... Oh, jeez, let's have a sleep. Yeah, somehow ended up in these hoppers here. I have absolutely no idea how they could have done that unless the hopper hip box is big enough to take it. So unless your bone meal line is, you know, backed up all the way up to your chest, you might end up with flowers getting in your system like I did. Which is not ideal. It shouldn't be happening, but it is. I'm going to let these filter through and tell you exactly how many we got in just a minute. Okay, I have done the maths and it is quite impressive. So, this little farm will create 5,039 items in 6.48 minutes or 408 seconds, which means it will produce 12.4 flowers per second, which is 741 flowers per minute, which is 4,460 flowers per hour. Or die, because they're one for one. Which means that 694.7 stacks per hour, so I guess you could probably round that up to 700 stacks per hour, which is 25.7 chests per hour, or 26 chests per hour if you're rounding up, which actually works out that you get 8.75 flowers, so 9 flowers per piece of bone meal. Not bad. Not bad at all. Jeez, what an impressive farm. Right, I want to put more bone meal in it now. I would like it if the flowers didn't get into the bone meal hole, though. That would be uh, very beneficial. I'm just going to go up here, grab a little bit more bone meal, if I can fly in without dying today. There we go. Many, many, many bone meals for our amazing machine. And this time, I think I'm going to put in a yellow flower. Now, I could put in orange, but I'm already getting ridiculous numbers of the red flowers from my iron farms. So let's put in some orange flower, yellow flowers and see how many of those we get. Although, having said that, we can duplicate those with the uh, two tall sunflowers. But, oh man, this, this, this thing's just too impressive. It's too impressive. Now, all I'm going to do this... Hello. <laughs> Hello, sir. You come to admire my machine. It's good, isn't it? You're not building this skyscraper around here, right? No, 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 honestly, sir, I wouldn't. Well, that thing's an eyesore. It's not finished yet. I, I still got the... Hmm. Don't stick around for conversation then, mate. Jeez. Just come to complain and all that. So, yeah, I'm going to run this for 30 seconds on yellow flowers and see how many we get. On your marks, get set, go. Oh, my goodness, he's back, and this time he's brought his last. Will you clear off, sir? No. And you, you can clear off, and you can clear off. We don't have llamas around here, especially not ones with scarves on. Thank you very much. Jeez. Hmm. I'm not sure if this is a bug, or if this is intentional, but I'm getting red flowers as well as yellow flowers. I mean, I'm getting more yellow flowers than I'm getting red flowers, but I am certainly getting red flowers, which is odd. Is that a bug? I feel like that's happened before. Maybe it's a mechanic, but still don't want the red flowers, I just want the yellow ones. And we are getting significantly more yellow ones, so that's okay. 
What's not okay, though, is I got distracted by the wandering trader, and now it's now been over a minute since I started the machine, which means my test is all null and void, so I need to start again. Stop. And there we go. In just 30 seconds, I got nearly six stacks of dandelions, plus a couple of poppies as well, which is incredible. That's amazing. What about alliums? We the same, surely? Well, maybe, but I want, I got, I want to check. On your marks. Get set. Go. And again, after just 30 seconds, I have over six stacks of alliums. So there we go. With really very little effort at all, you are able to create an incredibly powerful, incredibly fast and quite efficient flower farm, which means you will have all the dyes in the world in absolutely no time at all. Wow. Thanks for watching, peeps. Goodbye.